today's interconnected world, community outreach and advocacy play vital roles in fostering positive change and environment. By actively engaging with communities and advocating for their needs, many believe we create a rippling effect that impacts extends beyond immediate needs and boundaries. Bridget Williams is the president and founder of It Takes a Village, a community outreach and advocacy organization. Today, Bridget joins me in the studio. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, life is busy. I know I really appreciate you being here and taking the time out and talking about a few things about yourself, about books, you're an author as well, and you're a community advocate. So how would you start by telling me a little bit about yourself? Well, I am from the community of East Preston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my parents are Dolly Williams and Sinclair Williams. Yes. So my drive is because of my parents and how I was raised. I am the parent of two children <laughs> and three grandchildren. No, not grandchildren. Yes. Doesn't she look lovely? She's younger than she <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. That's lovely news. I think that's beautiful. So I, um, I now have 21 books on Barnes and Nobles and Amazon. Nice. They are easy to get a hold of. We actually have some copies here. Yes. As she can show you, there's more than that, but. Yeah, so this one's taking back what was stolen and also uh, women to women, woman to woman, yes. right? And you have countless others, but we'll get to that. But these are great. I mean, I'm, um, I want to congratulate on the accomplishments because I know writing isn't an easy task. You need to have that creative space. Self-published. Right, absolutely. Self-published? Yes. Okay, now she's really blowing me away. Talk to me about that, because that's a task in itself. So writing the books, um, I, wow. was, I was told by the almighty God <laughs> that this was something to help me through a process. Right. I was going through some things. I moved back here because of it. And this was helping me to get through the process. So I began to write. The writing was, became my outlet. Therapeutic. Very much so. Yes. So from that, it empowered me. And then I kept writing. Got the, you know, kept writing. So I have books on personal things, on financial things, yes. on frugal spending, a number of different books, change, you know, in society, things happening all the time. So it was just, a, a, and then the people that reach out to me after they bought a book and read the book told me that they gave it to somebody else that could use it. Nice. And then I had a actual counselor who told me that my book's called, that's called All is Forgiven. Mm -hmm. She actually used that for her counseling practice nice. and give it to her clients to use. And I was like, my personal experience, this book talks about not about what you've been through, but how you get through, through it. it. Right. I love that. I love that. I love that. So you are so out there with being transparent and being um, vulnerable in the sense that um, how does that how does that does that help you get out of your comfort zone? Does it help you get past? Because now you're living that out, right? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm one. I never used to be. I was always behind the scenes. <laughs> I would never, ever be on here, you know, but it's, it's a different world. This has changed me through the transformational journey. Um, I am no longer a quiet. I speak truth and um, it's ongoing. And uh, I've been on so many different platforms, which allowed me to that empowered me too. Mm -hmm. I met some amazing people here and globally, but uh, just a fruit for thought right. of everything that I encompass. It has been a transformational journey. It empowered me to do better. And you know what? At the end of the day, I find my power through my pain. Can you say that again? I found my power through mm -hmm. my pain. What I was going through with the thing that empowered me to do more. So the more I did, the more I felt better, the more it was a driving force. Right. It's yeah. like we are a canvas. <laughs> and and every that. and every piece of the canvas is a piece of your life. Right. It's like a puzzle. You don't know how you're going to impact people right. or whose lives you're going to transform. Because when people come up to me, I'm like, wow. You just don't know. Right. I said, I'm just following the big guy. <laughs> I'm just getting my, my uh, you know, confirmation from him. And I'm just doing what needs to be done. Right. I'm trying to create a better world for myself. Yeah. And hopefully and that the community. Around yes. And, yeah. and hopefully that 
you know, like you said, ripple effect, you know, and, you know, it's, it's about compounding the ripple effect, yeah. not, not just in one community, but many communities. And the people that were quiet when we started to support the communities that came out and said, you guys saw me. Thank you. Nobody sees us. We're always hidden and we're overlooked. And I said, but that's what we do. Right. So we are community and we care. <laughs> Say that to the to our listening. We are community <laughs> and we care. Absolutely. That's, it takes a village. <laughs> okay. So we, I want to get into that. I want to get into that. But before I go there, I want to ask this question because you said something about um, you were quiet and you didn't use your voice. So compared to that to now, from then to now, when you're now using your voice, when you're now stepping out, right? What in your experiences, what has been the most rewarding for now speaking up and speaking up? The, the most rewarding thing is if I had had a voice at a younger age, just imagine I know. the lives I could have impacted back then. Younger people my age could have been supported. Yeah. But everything happens for a reason and for a season. So we have to go through that. So what do you think was the reason for your silence, for your quietness? For My your... quietness, um, that's another story. Okay. That's that's another that's the one that's the adjust that's all forgiven book. Yes. That's that talks about the healing. Okay. The things so I you'll come back on the show. Oh and yes. Talk about that. We'll okay. talk about that. I, <laughs> that pain. I want to get into that. That pain. Yeah. Yeah. But, I think some people are, are afraid to unpack their pain because it's ugly and you lived it and you don't want to relive it again. That's no. something Tina Turner said, right? Yeah. She refused the movie. Um, because she said, I already lived that. Yes. I don't want to relive it again. No. But there's a part of healing. She did find healing mm. through other means. Yes. But to, for you, you were able to write. No, you were right in saying that. Yeah. The thing about it, because everyone, you don't know, everybody has a story. And a path. That and want. a path yeah. of, that they need to go through. And I, I always say, you go through what you grow through. You grow through what you <laughs> go through. You're all these nuggets on me. <laughs> you grow through what you it. go through. Yeah. Every day is a lesson, you know, and it's how you uh, embrace it. Mm -hmm. And for me to be humbled by everything that I, because, you know, everything that happens, it's like, uh, wow, aha, I wasn't expecting this. Right. So when it happens, I'm like, okay. <laughs> what next? <laughs> yes. So the surprises um, that, that happen are just amazing. Um, you know, it's not about me. It's about he right. and those who I serve. Right. Okay. That's a strong message. Is there another book in the making? <laughs> well, <laughs> she turns. To I have many here okay. that you can put oh, up. Wow. Look at this, everybody. This is a wealth of information. But, uh, and again, I hope everybody would go and check out the resources for Bridget's books and get one of those in your hands because uh, you're hearing her talk, you're hearing her share, but it's nothing more than sitting down in a quiet place and reading about um, the challenges that she's overcome and she's now trying to share to break other people free. Yes. Right? So let's segue into It Takes a Village for a second. Okay. Because I think that was birthed out of out of this. Okay, out of this. So share with me what um, the mission and the vision is of It Takes a Village and how it got started. I'm going to start at how it got started. Okay. <laughs> so when COVID came in, COVID-19 came, I said, you know what? Under adjusting your lifestyle, I said, I have to do something to support people because mm -hmm. these are trying times. I said, um, so to make a long story short, it started with projects under adjusting your lifestyle. Right. And I said, this feels good, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and people appreciate and things like that. And then we kept doing it. And then I said to the folks at the time, I said, I need to get a separate entity for It Takes a Village because it's not the same. Right. One's for profit, one's not, not for profit. profit. Yeah. So, and then empowering others to come out of their comfort zone, like even the community people that come out. The volunteers. Yeah, volunteers. Yeah. We have 30 plus volunteers. It's just it's just that we we got so much planned. We have so many uh, things coming up. June, we're going to be giving out free reading glasses in East Lovely. Preston. And you guys also gave out computers to we, some of the seniors. Yeah, we give you? computers to seniors. Yes. And then we have some other things coming down the pipeline, so you just don't know what we have. <laughs> um, there are a lot of like a, a lot of nuggets, a yeah. lot of nuggets. We're trying to reach different communities, so 
and sometimes we just did a uh, drop for emergency kits for our community seniors, nice. COVID kits and things like that. So that happened. Like, and then we helped them feed people. We helped the homeless. Yes. In February and January, we went out to the sites. Yes. That was life changing. Oh my God. Yeah. Especially to see the wheelchairs outside of the campsites. I said, these people, wheelchairs, wheelchairs. Really? That was hard, that was heart wrenching. And then the, when they say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. They really appreciate it. So we supported 800 homeless people. Wow. wow. That was clothing, that was blankets, that was food, that was essentials. So whatever that was needed. emergency kits, that was COVID kits, you know, hats, gloves, skirt, whatever they needed, we gave to them. Food. Um, food can be a touchy one because some people can get iffy around that, but you guys seem to have like those um, support systems in place, yeah. right? And do you collaborate with other um, community collaborators and partners? So how do you guys? The last time we gave out food was, we did a, a seniors um, ha food hamper. Yes. Now we advertise on our website the different uh, hampers that's out there. Okay. okay, And then we also have scholarships on our page. Okay. We also have emergency outlets, community health, so many, and rebates. Really? That people don't even think about yeah. is on the page. There's okay. so many on the page. Is that the heating rebates? Is that not the heating? He heating and okay. some other ones that are on there. There's a number of rebates. Um, you know, and if I hear or think of anything else, I will continue to add. If somebody knows of any free rebates, tell me about them. <laughs> I like to add them. If you know of any other scholarships, tell me about them. <laughs> they are all connected to the page. Yes. 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 Okay. So I want to go and focus on your volunteers for a moment. Okay. Because they get really under recognized sometimes. Yes. But I know for you, because you and I've talked about this, um, that you super value oh, your, your volunteers. None of this would be possible without the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I appreciate you guys are amazing. The same as the volunteers. All our volunteers are also, or all of our board of directors are also That's volunteers. So, you know, if you're going to be a part of us, we, we have to, from the ground up, Right. And everybody that comes in, and our, our volunteers are multicultural. Yes. We have different ethnic groups part of our team. Um, everybody comes out through their part. We appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And we want to do something in the future for them. Yes. And we'll be talking about that. <laughs> I'm here for you. I'm yes. here for you. Yes. I love, I love giving people their flowers. By the yes, time. exactly. Right. And because they've done so much, you know, and... And there's something, obviously, that, you know, it takes a village... That's that that is very um, empowering and impactful because they keep coming back and every time you call upon them they say yes. But not just that, but every time we go to an event, more people want to come on board because they see, see the they like what we're doing and there's results. And I say, hey, give your name to volunteer director, that kind of thing, and uh, we just you know. And sometimes people can't make it. I say, well, those who can, it's fine. You know, we know people have lives. And things happen, but you know they they are they are a critical part. It, nothing will be possible without the volunteers. Absolutely. Um, you know I'm not a one woman show, and I don't pretend to be. And I pay respect to all of my volunteers because their time is their time, and if they're coming up to do this, right. they need to be acknowledged and appreciated. Absolutely. And not taken advantage no, of. No, absolutely, absolutely. And we don't want to burn them out either. No. Um, so for the remaining of our time, is there any words or thank yous or shout outs that you want to get out to anyone that who has supported you, mentored you, you know, use that time to kind of acknowledge those Okay, well. so the person that told me to write was Anne Devine. Mm -hmm. Anne <laughs> Devine, I was taking Anne v Devine class and I was telling her, I was writing and she said, you need to write. She pushed me and then I didn't know how I was going to execute. And then I went to another class, Bonnie O'Toole was teaching this class. I said, Bonnie, I want to write. She said, I can show you how okay. where to go to execute. Bonnie told me how to do it. I uploaded it. It was out the next week and it was a frugal <laughs> spending book. I don't believe I have it here. And she actually purchased the first book nice. and gave it to me as a gift. And then she got one and I signed it for her. <laughs> so just to have those people that see something Encouraged in you, you yeah. and empowered me. And I'm like, I really don't want to have my business out there. But I know this is confirmation because I have to do it. 
because whatever I write is going to impact somebody and it's going to support and it's going to help. And if people pass the books down to this person, to that person, actually um, last summer mentoring summer students yes. with my the government, um, I gave some of them my books and they really appreciated it. Nice. They have the, um, the financial ones that that's going to help them while they're in university. So yes, I do have books for <laughs> students about financial, uh, credit, credit and loans, banking. Well, these are good information while you're going through school. financial yeah. consciousness and about spending wisely and all that great stuff. Like there's so many components <laughs> to it. To you're, it. You're an awesome person and, and I definitely want to have you back on the show. Okay. And if I haven't said it, I love your outfit. <laughs> Why, thank you so much. I can't help but and look I at love it. yours. <laughs> I have to keep up with the young people. Um, so that's all we have today, Bridget. But I do want to extend another invitation to you yet again because definitely. there's so much to you and I don't think we can capture in one show. So that's all the time we have today. Bridget works can be found at Barnes and Nobles and Amazon Books. And more information on her organization can be found at and let me get this right, I-T-A-V-C-O-A.com. Again, I-T-A-V-C-O-A.com. So be sure to stay tuned and connected to Community Update through our social media list below here. My name is Nicole Johnson, and thank you for watching.